I've been asked to comment about a presentation at the CMSC this year, the uh, virtual meeting, uh, regarding an abstract that compares the use of ocrelizumab to two first-line therapies, dimethyl fumarate and glutirmer acetate. This was a retrospective chart review that was done, I guess, in a month of subsequent years, 2016, 2016, 2017, and 2018, looking at uh, a couple of hundred different charts from patients uh, that are selected by, and I'm not sure if these were MS specialists or simply neurologists utilizing these medications to get uh, an idea of how they're using these drugs, I guess, in the first line treatment of patients with MS. And so the results were um, somewhat interesting in that uh, many of the physicians were still utilizing, uh, in this case, glutirmer acetate and dimethyl fumarate, uh, a majority of the time as the first line and only using ocrelizumab if they felt that the patient required some form of uh, escalation. And so the conclusion was that uh, ocrelizumab utilization over these years was not really increasing uh, and only uh, was chosen, I, it would appear, that if uh, the patient failed the uh, treatments with either dimethyl fumarate or, or glutirmer acetate. Well, so much of these retrospective reviews depend a lot on uh, who is treating, uh, who is the, the person who's making this choice, and why physicians choose one therapy over another is really quite um, heterogeneous. Uh, you know, it's, it's typical, or it should be typical, that before choosing a medication, uh, there are a number of factors to consider. And the first and, and probably the most important of those factors is trying to ascertain what sort of disease pattern a patient has. And if a patient, because not all patients present with the same kind of disease activity or prognosis, and if their disease is such that it warrants a higher efficacy therapy from the start, then there would be really no need to go through uh, a, a drug like uh, glutirmer acetate or dimethyl fumarate. Uh, and, and, and knowing full well that a, a patient with those characteristics is likely to fail those therapies or have a suboptimal treatment response, you're just losing time and possibly brain while you await the decision to move to a higher efficacy therapy. And such patients who have that poor prognostic to, to begin with probably weren't starting a drug such as ocrelizumab uh, and uh, not necessarily escalating up from, say, a first-line therapy.